but uh, we could not uh, we could not um, not could not pass on the chance of, of presenting today uh, Andreas Manuel Prieto in conversation. Um, Andres' uh, exhibition is at the Townsend Center. We we co-promoted. Uh, this event together. It's wonderful to have everybody here. Um, the formula is usually pretty simple. We uh, put together a presenter, uh, scholars, uh, people from the community, independent researchers, artists, um, our students often come here and present, and objects in the collection. The Magnus is one of the largest uh, Jewish museum collections in the world. Uh, what you have here is La Familia. And as you will hear, you have La Familia. Uh, it's, it's a 1980 uh, painting that was donated to the Magnus in 1984. And you're now reunited with La Familia. Uh, so we'll, we'll hear about this reunion as well, but also about the, the work of, of uh, Andreas Weissmann. Um, no need to go very much into details about the fact that Jewish memory, memory in general in Argentina are extremely tied together. They're very, very, dense, thick, loaded topics and fascinating topics uh, from Borges to the recent trials from the bombing of the, of the, of the building in Buenos Aires. You, you can go in every direction you want and I'm sure we'll hear more about how all of these ties in with uh, creativity. <coughs> so the formula is simple. Uh, today we have a, a slightly different of a conversation between our two guests. Uh, but essentially the idea is that by putting presenters and objects together we discover things that we would not otherwise be presented with. So welcome again and thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Um, my name is Gachi, Gachi Prieto, and I am Andres' vice fund's wife. And I was introduced into the world of art by him because we were married very, very young. And we did live here in San Francisco and Berkeley for eight years in the 80s. And that's where we founded our family. So as Francesco said, it's very important for us to be here, gather together, and with the chance to talk to you with this work of art, the family. Uh, it's very symbolic as most of Andres' work. And um, I, have, I am a curator and I have an art gallery in Buenos Aires, but uh, I'm here as both, you know, first as wife and then as a, an art curator. And the way we organize this is mostly as a conversation. I'm going to ask Andres some questions. And we have not rehearsed any of the questions, so it will come a surprise to him. But um, we might go back and forth into Spanish and English, if necessary, okay? Um, so, first of all, uh, Andres was born into a middle-class porteño, that's from Buenos Aires, Jewish family, and he was raised into the arts since very, very young. So that's my first question to you, Andres. How were you educated? What was your first contact with the arts? How was it that you become, became involved with the arts? I don't know the question. She, she's so pretty. <laughs> uh, I started when I was 11 years old. I, I, know, I, I went to the first studio, the first artist studio. And it's very typical in Argentina to go to a private studio and also the institution, institutions. And I started to, to, to learn how to paint Philography, uh, then I go to another studio, another studio, and then I start to work to Europe in, uh, when I was 18 years old and 24 years old. That is my education, what education is forever. Um, I made my first show when I was 16 in Buenos Aires with a series of engravings and a mixed media uh, on paper, and the title of this series was the 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 uh, mutilate. The mutilate yeah. was no, it was not very very uh, optimist uh, <laughs> for a child. <laughs> and um, well, uh, 
Then I, I, we, I, I start to, to paint an oil and, and, and acrylic and you know, all the, all the these different uh, uh, procedures. All, all the things, all the, the images uh, ask me different techniques. And uh, I know, uh, <coughs> in all my career, I'm sorry, in all my career uh, uh, I changed several times. Uh, the figure to the abstract, almost abstract, and uh, also three-dimensional stuff recently. And I start also to uh, work to, the, to, to do um, three-dimensional uh, stuff with uh, steel wool. You know steel wool is just to clean the floors. <laughs> and and um, to me, this series is, I'm going back in two minutes, but to the first uh, series, where, where this is one of them. And the steel wool, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we don't have any picture of that, that story. Uh, it's like a territories. It's uh, like people again in uh, big multitudes. The nomadism is in these uh, works also in the series of multitudes, what is I made before the, the steel wool stuff, and the installations, because I'm working with installations right now, with some very strange animals, you know, uh, uh, porks with a body of uh, another animal. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. And sort of mythological animals. Yeah, well, so, yes, because I'm talking about what, what what I think is possible in the future, but also what happened in the past. And in my whole career, my whole you know, way of working, uh, I have just, a, a, not just one concept, but almost, and it's multitudes from the beginning. And this family belongs to this multitude. It's the family, but it's a Jewish family. Uh, the, the strange thing, the, the, uh, strange thing to me was look like a very Peronist family. Uh, Peronista, you know the political party in Argentina? Yeah, nobody forget. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and uh, are you asking something? No. Look, why? Why what? I'm sorry. Why does it look like a Peronist family? It's an archetypical. Uh, image of uh, these guys with uh, bright uh, hair, welcome hair, yeah. and on the other side the lines, you know, the the how is it? What does? Excuse me. The courts, the, the courts, where the courts is it? Is hundred one uh, for I don't know where from God from from something He's out of this yeah out of these persons this family. I don't know why I think it's a very family, but it's what I feel, but I feel it's, it's fine. It's also a typical image um, of a family in the 50s, you know, the way they are dressed and, you know, the, the whole aspect of the characters, right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I mix this period and all the periods, because the clothes there is not exactly from the 50s. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you know, you can think about it. Any, any period, mm -hmm. and I belong to a middle class family, Jewish family in, in Buenos Aires, uh, and uh, my education, if we go back to there, is uh, I, I used to have a, a, a aunt, uh, an artist, and I remember in my first uh, years before the adolescence, uh, how she works and he works, her husband, uh, very tragic uh, images. Well, these tragic images, plus my memories, my, my memories, the memories of the people close to me, uh, synthesized in this painting and in this area. I'm right? Everybody understand? Yeah, it's very boring. Uh, and, um, what is your next question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
basically one of the questions had to do with that if you work in series, if the evolution of your work is linear, or if you go back, sort of that you answer already, no? That you have yeah. one concept that spreads out, but if you want to deepen on, on that idea. What? what are the narratives of your works, why you became if basically how you approach painting. Do you go to your studio, you have the white canvas, and what happens? What's your method? Well painting no, the idea the concept the idea I already I already said about that. But I'm going to the studio, I open the doors, I uh, I have a paper, piece of paper or a canvas or whatever. Doesn't matter, maybe Hessel or, or Beatles or Steel. Uh, and my routine is uh, Tuesday to Friday or whatever. You know, no, there are no time for that. But um, I want to say something about the, the different periods. There are one period I start to paint the lost alphabet. I don't know why, in some moment, uh, something came from, the, from God or whatever. And I start to write in the paintings different words. I, I don't know in Hebrew. I, I don't I, I don't know how to, to write. But I sin repetable. No, no, that is respectful. I start to write uh, to yeah to write from the right to the to the left. And was really, you know, a mystic uh, period, a mystic um, Experience? Experience. Uh, in the middle of this chaos of my painting, my works before that and after that. And I, I a, a rabbi, a friend of mine there, Sergio Berman, he came to my studio and he invited me for a show in the, in the Jewish Museum there. And he said, okay, I don't remember the word, but he said, well, you write that. You know this uh, this una uh, palabra con este sentido, and um, and was a surprise to me because I told I told you I I I don't know how to write it, but I think I catch the message in this uh, painting in this series of paintings, and I think I made probably forty or fifty works on canvas with different levels of painting and different paintings like acrylic, oil and enamel. The bright, the opaque, everything was there. And I'm so sorry I don't have any image to, to give you because it's better than my words, <laughs> my experimentation. And, and um, well, but the, the, the routine is uh, just to go to work because everything is coming when you are working. It's not uh, magic. <laughs> the magic starts in the sometimes when you are working. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, no, that had to do with, with one of my questions that was um, how the accidents, the discoveries, the improvisation, and the intuition come to your help when you're working, right? Um, it's like from the rational to the non-rational. You know, you you go back and forth, don't you? Yeah, but I think that, that's happened all the time. <laughs> I can't have an idea, but uh, and I I uh, you approach the painting. Uh, yeah, approach the painting, and there are uh, things what I think before and accidents, I, I like a, a sun. Hazel. 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 Right. And you need to control this heat. Because I work, when I work with enamel, you know, with solvents and uh, everything with uh, oil. Oil? Yeah. And, uh, and if, well, the procedure is just to put on the painting some, uh, some liquids to see what happens, but under control. I can stop the, the, the big manchas and I, I, 
and I have the idea. Some, and sometimes I can control that, and sometimes not. What? Yeah. When you are talking about your last series of works, and yeah. if um, she's trying to put me on, no, no, no. <laughs> if one were to look at all the series along the years, because you started at 16 years old, you said, and now you're like 35. <laughs> So it was many decades already of different works, and if you look at them, you look at the fig figurative pieces, and then you look at the landscape series, or the terracotta kingdom series that you developed here in the United States, which were more figurative. Ten years ago. Yeah. And then, and then you look, for, for instance, at a newer series called Collective Cartographies, that were derived from yeah, it's the... It's in the, in, in the, in the, in the Berkeley University. Okay. Uh, oh, the yes. And the show. And, the uh -huh. and there you see... You are like, invited. Like a very rational, meticulous, peculiar, almost obsessive trace of lines, which I'm sure you have to do with extreme care. And it's very different from the process of painting these newer black and white works with lots of acrylic and enamel. So I, my question is, emotionally, how does that work? I mean, when you have to be very restricted and controlled, and when you just throw painting on the canvas? Well, it depends if I find with you or not. <laughs> okay. Now, there are different moments. I, maybe I, I have an a obsessive ear or, or, or mystic uh, uh, ear period or whatever. To read my 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 uh, work artworks, uh, the first thing I think I understood right now, and the people need to understand, is I work like in chapters. It's like a whole book. There are a book, retrospective book about me. That's different. And in this book, I found the whole period that was very surprised to see what happened. The images are not the same, but always I am the same guy painting. You can recognize this painting. Even the cartography, the, the multitude, or um, the, like she said years ago, the big ships with all the people on the, on the top. That is how the multitude start. And then I use, I did like a close-up of the camera, and I paint just multitudes, <coughs> just multitudes. But in the beginning, you know, the, the story of Argentina is more or less the, the story, like the first story, like the, the, the United States. Everybody came from Europe and from different countries around the world and big ships. And uh, Peron received some ships and another sent it back. I'm talking about the period of uh, the first Peron and the first uh, anti-Semitism uh, government. In Argentina. In Argentina, of course. And, well, this memory start, start, uh, start are, are in, the, in, in my paintings. I can, I can, it's difficult to, to explain uh, when the emotional super, super, uh, super, super over, overwhelms over, me. Yeah, overwhelms me. And when the accidents, so or when everything is like a language, language. And I, and I, I am also, I, I'm always I am involved on, 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 stronger on the, on the word, the art work. I, it, it's sad, but I, I really uh, enjoy doing my work, but it's not funny. It, it, uh, you know, it's, um, it's a kind of catharsis. Uh, well, yeah, all the artists are catharsis, but uh, it's treated. Uh, it's sad. It's, uh, sad, yeah, it's a little sad. I enjoy it, but it's sad because what uh, is in my uh, in my mind is very not uh, you know uh, nice images of my memories. And uh, I said before, if if it when I saw the book about my work, doesn't matter if I work or not, my, my book. I, can, I couldn't see what happened with this painting uh, 30 years ago, 
because the, the, the period of my moment there was uh, reflect, reflections about what happened. Uh, I remember I started when I was 16 with my first show, and the mutilate. Something come, came to me uh, tragically. I was not very optimist when I was 11 years old. What is, you know, what I do? Because it's, 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 a, it's a painting, but it's not a funny painting. There are a lot of stuff from the past in the painting. Well, we are, we are in, talking about the 70s in Argentina, it was a very also, difficult yeah. time. Yeah, also. Uh, uh, well, something else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was thinking that um, before uh, we came to live in the United States, yeah. Uh, we arrived here in 1984, which was already a democratic period in Argentina, but we had just come out of all the years of the dictatorship, which were very harsh for artists, because before then, there was a very strong scene in Buenos Aires, but during the dictatorship years, all the artists either exiled or recluded secluded in their studios and they were not allowed to show or they didn't want to show, couldn't show what they were doing. And you started a, a series of works that had to do with the disappear, the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, and all that was happening in Argentina. And it was very interesting because I remember you started a series of works that were shapes of people shapes of the disappeared and they had initials on their bodies which later on became a very strong political movement in the arts in Buenos Aires, the Siluetazo. It was called the Siluet, Siluetazo. That came from the people. The and knowledge. the people, yeah, it was not done by the, the artists, it was done by the people who would go and draw on the walls of the city the figures, the shape of their beloved ones that have been taken away. You know, like empty shapes, like when you draw a line around, like kindergarten kids do, they draw a line around the bodies and they have the shape. So that became a movement. And even before that, you started to paint these images and you had initials on them and you had ties and lines that came out, like in this family yeah. portrait. And then you came to live in the United States. And you continued a little bit during these kind of works that had to do with... Because but not finished in me, you know. Okay. I, I, I continue working until the influence of the paintings or you know, the arts in the United States changed me a little bit, you know, this influence in the, the, the 18th century. Uh, I start to work uh, with more colors, with more the uh, more space. I use all the space. Uh, you know, some kind of freedom, some kind of freedom. But anyway, after this short period, I, I go, I, I went back to the to my field, myself. You know, and but in this painting, uh, yeah. Did it I, I was trying to, to think a great phrase for us oh, in I'm English. Sorry. No, no, just I lost. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking that with this piece particularly, which you painted here in the States, right? Yeah. Um, you became going upwards in, in your questioning because you were still talking about the ties and the bonds and the families and everything that had happened, but you started moving a little bit towards more the religious questions, the origin of the world, the origin of man, God, life, time, right? I and then you, you started working on the on the series of works of the Terracotta Kingdom and Memorias of the Patria Grande, all the beginning works that you did here. You remember States. all the series, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say one marries so that you can have a witness. I'm your witness. <laughs> so, anything in particular that you want to remember about that period? Or? 
No. Because it was like this one. <laughs> okay. All right. Next question. And then, <laughs> then you went, we went back. We lived eight years in, here, in yeah. California. Yeah. And then we went back to Buenos Aires. Yeah. And when we went back to Buenos Aires, you started painting ships and boats. And you know that they say we Argentinians come from the boats. We are all, almost all immigrants, European immigrants mostly. Um, so that's where you started painting the multitudes. Yeah. And you were started talking about the exodus. But my question is, how does that relate with this exodus of this family? I mean, the fact that your ideas go in spiral ways and they they come again and again and again with different shapes, no different images. It's difficult to explain all the all the the stuff. You you mention a lot of periods, a lot of painting, different images. Uh, I start. Uh, I say how I start to paint, how to to uh, came to involve in, in the in, in arts. I don't believe, or oh, I don't believe, it's not a, I don't know who or is an artist or not. I, I, I try to work in art, yeah? because artist, the artist is a, you know, a big, high concept. Who is the artist or not? What we try to do is, uh, in my case, is to, to leave something. I know it's not the idea of the contemporary art. Probably. The I'm going to talk about the technology. It's incredible right now to do a new, a new, different kind of art. And that's the reason something uh, moved to me to add other expressions, like photography, like three dimensional stuff, etc. etc. What, what, I, what I see is the same thing. My idea is the same. And uh, we are living in a world right now, many days and again, I don't want to go that <laughs> this way. You know, we, we are in the middle of something. Uh, it's what I smell and it's what I paint. Uh, and there are, I don't know, but there are artists or people who work in arts who try to understand or they can smell something is uh, I'm not going to say coming back but we need to be careful why that's a, one of the reasons I paint the multitudes the multitude talk about the nomadism but talk about the reality right now not just the Jewish memory or whatever the whole world is in movement right now. The whole world is... Uh, when we, we see the, the, the pictures in the newspapers and in, in, in TV, these enormous boats with the people killed on uh, For other people, you know, the immigration problems. And it's a, a very, uh, you know, a very hard, it's very hard to, I don't know, to, to hear the speech of this guy with some hair, how I said, what is the name? The guy in the Tarot. Oh, okay. I don't know. She doesn't want to talk about the political speech. But no, okay. I, 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 I believe that your work is political enough. What was the name of the millionaire guy? Trump. Trump. If somebody don't stop him, He's a new Hitler. <laughs> and it's not uh, indifferent for me to read what he said or to hear what he said and how many people are behind his ideas. And it's, this material is also to, to, you know, the big stuff to, to, to work for the writers or for the artists. I am. I, I, I be clear, uh, I made mistakes and what? Nothing. <laughs> Everybody understand. Everybody's moved, I made a mistake. 
No, um, the idea is... Um, you forgot all of that. <laughs> if, um, if you want to ask some questions as well, yes. Sorry. I want to go back to the question about Peronism and the Jewish family. And, I'm, I'm, and you came back to my question with some answer, maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm curious about how you bring the two together, the idea that it's a Jewish family, but a very Peronist family at the same time, even though the, the social imaginary was that they were antagonistic as images, you know, this anti-Semitism, you know, that you mentioned. Maybe there's an element of exodus that bring the two together, like the migrants from the interior of the country to the capital and the Jews, you know, from your, I don't know, maybe it's my, I'm projecting it here. But also in light of this new book by Ranan Rhine, right, or however you pronounce that in whatever language we speak, um, about Los, los Muchachos Peronistas Judíos, which actually defies you're this idea. Huh? You are Argentinian. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> but but everyone's, I mean, everyone has English, English, so like I'm bringing. So if, if you could elaborate why these two, because intuitively of the way we grew up, I mean, Peronism and, and Jews, where there was anti-Semitic element, you know, in Peronism, and you said that these families could be either, you know, a Jewish family, certainly, and a Peronist, very Peronist. Well, uh, that's happened before in other countries, with Argentine, uh, don't believe, the Jewish family in Berkeley, in Buenos Aires, I seem to believe that Perón was like an anti-Semitist guy because he uh, gave to the people, to the poor people, some law, some law, laws, 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 and the people loved him about for, for these reasons. And the, in, in the other way, the Jewish family believed in the same thing for a moment. Then they realized uh, all the Nazis came to Argentina because Perón opened the door and because they paid. In the other way, uh, Argentina is, uh, I'm so sorry because I feel very Argentinian in some way. No, I think you, you are not that. Uh, Argentina is not precisely a, a, a simple. No, well, simple is not. It's a very complicated country. Nobody can understand me either. But at this moment, uh, the people start to realize what happened with Perón, with his chief of, of uh, policemen to the Department of Police, who re refused uh, the Jewish people too. Nobody talk about that in Argentina anymore. Because the pluralism, this uh, mix of left, right, left, right, etc., and uh, I'm trying to, to explain what I feel about that. Because I was when Perón went to when the military cap came to stop the Perón uh, government, yeah, and I I think it was uh, a mistake to stop him at this time because I don't believe in. in this kind of uh, military course. Yeah, military course. But the Argentinians is, uh, the country is very sad, but the country, uh, in 39, 20 Argentine people uh, dressed like a Nazis, and they make a meeting, a big meeting, at Luna Park. 20,000 people including newspaper directors and workers. And maybe, well, it's a big thing. It's the second country after uh, Germany who helped the Nazis, not the Germans, the Nazis. But uh, precisely on this slide, this is precisely on this slide, I'm asking why? the question, why you because mentioned, I mean, it was very kind of intriguing to me that yeah. Artistically, like in your in your artistic mind, you know, these two allegedly antagonistic, you know, groups were merged in a painting 
with a particular coloring as well, because it's the coloring of the time of Peron, but also the coloring of, you know, ancestors' pictures. So this, this, this kind of overlap and putting together is an interest. I mean, if you could address that, it would be great. I don't know the, the contradictions, why I... I, uh... it is, I, I feel this is where we are. I mean, Argentina is a very contradictory country. It is a mix of uh, a lot of things. It's a, a, a country, you know, all, I'm sorry, it's, it's a country, the Italian heritage, the, the Spanish heritage, and I'm not going to say anything about the, the, the European country, but we are a mix, and in this mix we have a mess, <laughs> a big mess, and at this time the people doesn't realize what happened or in, in Peron period. I, I answer your question or not? It's uh, difficult to be. It's, it's it, yeah, it's, no, no. Oh, right. yeah, you're I can answer you answer. in Spanish and you can trust me. <laughs> I also, maybe. <laughs> Hi, um, I wanted to ask you um, you talked about the forms that you did and then they were things like that were repeated or copied by the people on the street. Was that, were you, did you, the, just the drawing on the, the walls of the forms with the, the letters in them? I mean, was that related back to people, people's knowledge of your work, or was it just a coincidence? Coincidence, yeah, or see, see, yeah, it's a coincidence. probably, yes. Yes. Yeah. It was a coincidence, or I, a lot of people think in the same way. What happened with these people, uh, how I express my, uh, my disagreement, my disagreement with what happened, etc., etc. But it was a, a really uh, incredible period after the Nuremberg. Uh, you know, uh, the first country in the world, like, uh, the, the first country in the world who uh, judged uh, militars was Argentina after the Nuremberg. After Nuremberg. And to me, it was very fresh. The memories of that was very fresh. That's a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's not. And when I start to paint that, I even realize what may be danger. Maybe some guy came to my house in and came to say, oh, what are you doing? You know, what I think, what I feel. And I don't know when it's a coincidence or when I'm very conscious about what I'm doing. In art, you know, it's, I don't know if you're an artist or not, but this is difficult. Yeah. It, it sounds to me like it's a master's or PhD thesis waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. <laughs> oh, no, and it's true, they all go together intuition, and you know that images come before words. And I remember about the multitudes. Um, this scholar, uh, Michael Hart from New York University, he, he wrote the theory of the multitudes in sociological in sociology, like a sociological concept. That was before. Yeah, and he wrote a, an email to Andres when he came across him and saying it's so interesting that you started painting multitudes be, before it became a sociological concept. Like many years before, a few years before, like four or five years before. And I, I think this happens a lot to artists who are in tune you know, who are, as Andres said, you know, in tune with the moment, with what happens in the world, and they are very sensitive to it. It's a collective unconscious. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So what are you working on now? And what? What are you tuning into? What are you working on now? In que está trabajando I, the last show in, in Argentina was, um, uh, for the, no, for the, no, Abrund. 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 Yeah, Abrund is a German word <laughs> that has many different translations and definitions, but basically uh, it's related to the feeling of an abyss, you know, that, that we are on the edge, that there's danger present, as Andres was saying before. And my work was, is uh, these three dimensional animals, uh, mythological animals, Cages, 
but not doesn't work like cages in, in the installation. Just I say that because it's like a structures with this uh, cupola, you know, uh, on the on the top, and also with a rest of uh, hassle, you know, on the floor, like uh, the room, uh, uh, demolition, and demolition, etc. Yeah, uh, also the paintings, the black and white paintings. And now, now, what is the last? I change a little bit from the black and white to an absolutely colorful paintings. And I think it's another period. I, I found that the, when I cut the, 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 the work, the, when something different changed, or when I stopped to, to work for a year, or for six months, I start to do some small papers, you know, maybe a little fever, whatever. And then one day in, in the morning or when I wake up, I, I, I start to do something and I said, well, it is. this is what is coming. And I start to work again. Yeah, and it's a desafio. It's a, a challenge. It's a challenge. And, but very, you know, very quiet, not nervous at all, because I'm, I'm, uh, in all these years, I have 60, you know, 35, uh, I learned from myself. I, I don't. I don't need to be, you know, concerned. The the change is coming. Hello. It's a process. Mm -hmm. There was another question over there. In this, in the um, art community, are you considered an Argentine artist who happens to be Jewish, mm -hmm. or are you consider a Jewish artist who who is Argentinian? And, and then, looking at it from your perspective, do you consider yourself to be a Jewish Argentinian artist, or do you consider yourself to be an Argentinian? Or do you not consider well, I you I mean, here. Clearly, you're clearly making political statements no, about the Argentinian no, artist. I, I but um, what, where does the Jewish identity, uh, how, how does that sort of stack up with your Argentinian? Oh, the next thesis. <laughs> the what, what? The next thesis challenge. <laughs> no, probably this mi mi mystic period became because I don't have a, 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 a religious background. I found myself. I know it's not the the, the correct way, probably, but I, an international. I have an international view. But my feelings are my feelings, and my memories are my memories, and what happened with the family, or you know, my family too. It's a mix of things because I, uh, I'm an Argentinian with uh, what I told before about the Nazis and Argentina, etc., etc. And it's a mix again. It's a mix in Argentina of people who think the military was fine, etc., etc., or the other people who say, well, this government is terrible, or this government is the, uh, a new mission of the country. What I try to say is, I'm Jew, I'm not religious, because I never learned anything about it, because my family, in these manners of adaptarse, um, uh, adaptarse, adapting to the, the world, those, you know, some uh, uh, heritage. Traditions? Traditions, yeah. Yes. But if you ask me if I am a, a first Argentinian or Jew or whatever, very difficult to say because I have a strong feeling in the box way. Easy, easy. <laughs> a lot of paintings that she had at the Camden Center, which is, by the way, a wonderful exhibit. Thank you, there. somebody said. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Stephen Paul, up across from the Camden. Many of the paintings that you have at the exhibit are the multitudes, which look to be a representation of lots and lots and lots and lots of people, but always against a different background sizes, different colors, different ways. Is that how how you thought about it, the multitudes against the background? And, and how did you think of what was the difference for you 
in the way that she constructed the painting. Dame la síntesis. No, sí. ¿Cuál es la diferencia para vos? No, no, no. De acuerdo al background de cada una de las multitudes que fueron diferentes, o sea, porque empezaron con paisaje. Yeah, start like landscapes. I, I, no, I, I thought about the ships and the people on the top, thinking probably about the Argentinian thing from the boats, as like you said. Then the close up, and now multitudes are there. The whole world, the whole world is like a multitude. When I start, when I start to work, when I make this close up, I, I, I think I, I told you something about the other day. I cut the brushes because I try to find how to do that without any stamp, you know, without any cliche or whatever. See? I cut it in, in diagonal, the, the brushes, in different sides, and I take it, uh, out some uh, hair from the, from the brush to produce this kind of red, um, round uh, four or something like that. And I start to, to uh, paint with different sides, with, I mean, with all uh, layers, you know, different layers, 10 layers, and until the painting is uh, simple or clear, or directly or not, whatever. Because there are people who say, well, this is fantastic, you look like a Peruvian uh, tapestry. <laughs> But I say, well, if you want it, to pass. <laughs> if you have a tapis, put a go in, you know. Uh, but no, this, the, the reason of these multitudes and the different multitudes, the different styles, because I began with uh, with oil. When, when you paint in oil, it's more, uh, the, the painting is fresh. The, the next day, you can put a, a little bit more cl uh, clear colors or dark colors or whatever. Uh, in, in the paintings in, in, in the university right now is are acrylics. And you know the acrylics dry three, three minutes, four minutes. And I start again with another probably color or size of the brush. And I start again until I, I can recognize what I want. This kind of round uh, forms and this lines of uh, multitudes, people. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know what, what kind of people. I know when the painting name is the Kabbalist, I know what I'm doing. Sometimes it's an exodus. We have all the immigration right now around the world, like I told before. And the face, you know, what, what is uh, pushing. <laughs> but it's incredible how change uh, the materials you will, you select to work. Like the oil, like the acrylic, like the enamel, uh, like a gesso, if you want to do something, you know, three-dimensional. And it's like experimentation every time. And what, what I think is, I'm not going to talk about history of Argentina because probably I made a mistake with this Argentinian woman. I, <laughs> I don't know. No, nothing. No, we are friends. <laughs> Best friends. Best friends. She, she, well, well, uh, the approach to the materials is the approach to the ideas. Yeah. From pictures that have one big piece that looks almost always the same. Yeah. And together they're bad. Thank you. I agree. <laughs> I agree too. <laughs> Thank you.